Yo, what is God flow? It's the ability to take command of your lyrics and not conform to those boring mainstream styles. And what are hell bars? Yo, damn, that was an intro. Whoa. All right. Finally, we got some plot points, and finally, we know a little bit of what's going on. <laughs> Damn, this is a good episode. Let's talk about it. I'm on that real shit. You be on that real shit. I'm on that real shit. You be on that real shit. I'm on that real shit. Who be on that real shit? I'm on that real shit. Who be on that real shit? I'm on that real shit. You be on that real shit. I'm on that real shit. You be on that real shit. I'm on that real shit. Who be on that real shit? I'm on that. I'm on that. I'm on that real shit. Real talk. Yo, so WandaVision episode four, we interrupt this broadcast, just dropped, and yo, that was a that was a great episode. I'm your boy, Token Drew, and today on Drew's Reviews, I'm going to split it up like I did last week, where I'm going to do my spoiler-free version first, and then I'm going to do the uh, spoiler discussion immediately after it. So, spoiler-free. The intro, like I said, was amazing for this WandaVision episode. It takes place... Can I say that? That's spoiling? Silence! I kill you! So this, so this episode follows the S.W.O.R.D. agents. And it gives you a hint of what's going on, what we're seeing so far. It was really fun seeing the people they brought back. If you've watched the trailers, such as Darcy and Jimmy Woo. The episode, it doesn't really go forwards. It kind of shows you what's happening on the real world and everything leading up to the same point that we got to last week. I don't feel like that's really spoilers. It's just kind of like showing how the two stories are converging. So I'm going to say that this was the best of the four episodes that we have seen so far. So far, it had an amazing intro. It had great tension. It had some humor. It felt like Marvel. You know what I'm saying? Like, while I was watching, I'm like, yes, this feels like the MCU. Finally. Now, let's talk spoilers. Yo, all right. I'm glad I can talk a little bit freely now because that episode was dope as hell. It starts off with the remnants of the snap or the blip as it was called in Far From Home. And it does it way better because you start off with Monica coming back to life from that dusty pattern. And I'm instantly I'm like, oh shit, you know, we're starting this way, baby. And she's in a hospital and there's so much pandemonium happening and She's trying to find her mom, Maria, who was in the Captain Marvel movie, and Monica being the little girl from the Captain Marvel movie, as I discussed a couple episodes ago. She finds out some shocking news and, you know, just, just the realism of what would happen if you were gone for five years and came back, and to you, you were only gone for 20 minutes. And, you know, it was such a cool ground level showing of it, you know? These big grand things that the superheroes do have consequences, both good and bad. We go to S.W.O.R.D., which is the Sentient Weapons Observation Response Division, and Monica is being brought up to speed a little bit, and she's sent to go on a missing persons case, and that's where she meets up with Jimmy Woo outside of Westview, New Jersey. Jimmy Woo is standing there with some cops, and they are standing in front of a sign that says Westview, and there's like a town right behind them, and you're like, okay, that's where Wanda and Vision is. But when they walk up, the cops say there is no Westview, Westview doesn't exist. So Jimmy asked the interesting question, why is it that we can see it, that we can sense Westview, but these guys can't? My theory right there is that because whatever Wanda's doing, it's not only affecting that little town, but everybody around it as on a mental state, just so that way they won't try and interfere, won't try to drive through there. You know what I'm saying? And it shows that there is a barrier around the town. And Monica gets sucked in, and that's how she ends up in episode two. Throughout the episode, we're also seeing, like right after that happens, it, sh it shows Sword starting to set up a camp around this area. And we have Darcy from the Thor movies coming up, and she's with three other head scientists, like a chemical bio, uh, a chemical engineer, 
a nuclear physicist or you know I'm, I'm, I'm screwing it up but like the top ones in their field and they go to this uh, secret base and she goes to detect what's going on and they're, they're trying to uh, they're sending drones into this field that when the drones go past a certain point they vanish from our line of sight as they go into Wanda's world <laughs> Wanda's world wait dude when Darcy is is going over the data that's coming back from the drones, she discovers that there are high levels of CMBR, which is cosmic microwave background radiation. Revealed later on in the episode, that's ancient relic radiation from the Big Bang. Now remember, remember what Wong says in Infinity War when he's discussing what the Infinity Stones are. They are relics from the Big Bang. And this is the energy that they're sensing over here. Furthering that theory that Wanda is utilizing all the powers of the Infinity Stones, not just one, because the Mind Stone, which is what made her, or was it the Space Stone, either way, those shouldn't warp reality. Feel me? So anyway, she pulls up a TV and she's seeing that she can detect the TV show, the episodes that we were watching, on this TV. And that's how they're able to see pretty much the first three episodes, what we saw. Man, it was really, really cool seeing them react and seeing them like make a board and start asking questions, such as questions we were asking, like what's with all the hexagons and stuff like that. Strangely enough, even in the room when they are using like some kind of board to detect all these different things like radar and some other R's like radar, or I forget what else they say, there are a bunch of hexagon shapes in there. So I think that's pretty interesting. We're still seeing hexagons in the world and outside of the world. There's another line that, that is said, just a passing line, that what if this this field, is it can continue to spread exponentially? As in, whatever she's doing can take over the whole world. Which is that theory that this is going to be turning into the House of M storyline because Wanda affects the entire world. So when Seward is watching on the TV screens, they see the same shit that we see, you know, such as the laugh track, such as the camera cuts and camera angles. Even when something comes in, like in episode two, when that helicopter came in color, but everything else is still black and white. They saw that. What they don't see, though, the one thing that kind of glitches is whenever the illusion breaks, such as in episode two again, when Jimmy Woo, and it's revealed in this episode, it was Jimmy Woo talking through the thing to communicate with Wanda. When that happens, the screen glitches so when uh, Darcy is watching on the screen she just sees Wanda start to look to the side and then it cuts to uh, Dottie breaking the glass then in the next episode like that Darcy's watching when uh, Geraldine is confronting her and that's when everyone sees that oh my god that's Monica what's going on when Wanda is confronting Monica everything glitches and then it goes to Wanda and Vision sitting down with the babies and Darcy's like well what just happened what just happened what was that glitch so it cuts to the end where you see Monica landing on the ground and saying it's Wanda it's Wanda it's all Wanda you know what I'm saying so that's that was a really really dope ass ending you know earlier in that episode they do have a cool spot where they are pretty much naming all the people that they're seeing in the episode, such as Mr. and Mrs. Hart, who they really are. And they're having their names with an ID on this board surrounding Wanda and Vision. Now, there's two interesting things about that. Number one, when they have Agnes on there, she doesn't have an ID. It's just her picture. And number two, Dottie isn't on there. Leading to two theories. Number one, Agnes, Agna, Agnes really is Agatha Harkness and because she's lived for so long she doesn't bother having a ID or anything like that and then we have number two that Dottie is something else because they because they did not have her picture or anything on that wall maybe Dottie and I don't think they had the mailman either now I think about it so two weird things could be happening right there Maybe one could be Mephisto, maybe one could be Grim Reaper. We've seen his helmet in the animated intro of episode two. So, you know, possibly. Man, it had a really, really dope part where we actually see when Wanda actually confronts Monica and starts doing her hands in the 
cool motion and shit and the red energy ball starts forming and she blasts her out you know like that that was crazy you know and and she's shooting through a whole bunch of different houses before she ends up getting out and then wanda fixes it all then wanda when she sees vision she sees vision is dead with his head caved in when thanos took the mind stone out of him and she kind of like looked away and like shook her head a bit and then she saw him like regular and even he had a kind of weird worried look on his face when they embraced so there there's a lot more to meets the eye right there and then finally we saw the uh the beekeeper which was just some agent franklin who went down in the hazmat suit and when he went under the tunnel and he passed through the barrier it changed into the beekeeper and when he climbs out of the the sewer grate and wanda says no it doesn't show what happens after that so that's still I still wonder what's going to end up with this Franklin guy. But man, this was a really good episode. I, I had a lot of fun. It had me hooked from the beginning, seeing the people coming back from dust. And, you know, it, it just really, really solid. It really felt like MCU. So I'm going to go ahead and give this episode an A. Well, you know, we're going to keep on going every week with this. So next week I'll have WandaVision episode 5. And I may be reviewing the Royal Rumble. I'm going to be watching it uh, this Sunday, or I guess yesterday as far as when you guys are going to see this. <laughs> so, you know, we'll see if that comes out on Wednesday. I don't know. I was supposed to take a break throughout January, but things happen. So anyway, I'm your boy, Token Drew. Live up. Smoke out. Game on. I'm out this bitch. Thanks for watching. I'm on that, I'm on that, I'm on that real shit. I hear the beating of the heart as I prepare for this trip. There's so many folks that touch my life that I'm gon' miss. Reminiscing on the past, man, I'm lost to this dream. Eyes open to this world, not believing what I see. Who watches the watches? We the people seeing clear. The march is long and far, man, our goal is very near. Oh me, oh my. I think we gon' die, sky crying above, as the snakes is in line, why do we let them run free, when we held down, ain't no kings, ain't no crown, just this fool and some clown, and I stand lost in thought, fighting off disbelief, they say no justice, no peace, I say fuck the police, middle finger in the air to all them boys in blue, you know, they shoot you down, as soon as help you, I don't need to stay, to keep me in line, you see my motto, keep to yours, and I keep the mind real shit.